Quick revision about aqueous human dynamics. We already know that it is secreted in the ciliary body from where it goes into the posterior chamber and through the pupil it enters the anterior chamber like this and it drains out through the trabecular meshwork. From trabecular meshwork it goes into the Schlem's canal and finally into the episcleral veins. So, is a quick revision. Now, let us come to the adult glaucomas. Now, we have seen that it is classified into open angle and angle closure. Okay. However, open angle glaucoma is 3 to 4 times more common than angle closure. Basically, the word glaucoma is almost synonymous with open angle glaucoma unless it is mentioned that it is angle closure glaucoma. So, it is very common and more dangerous because it is a silent thief of vision. The patient does not know that he is developing open angle glaucoma. By the time he realizes he is left with hardly any tunnel vision or just a temporal island of vision. So, the second one is angle closure glaucoma and it is a very painful condition. Now, let us see angle closure glaucoma. So, what are the risk factors? The first one is middle-aged women. Middle-aged women. Why am I saying women is that? Because they have a shallow anterior chamber. Women have a shallow anterior chamber compared to men and middle-aged because of the growing lens. Please remember the only organ always growing throughout the lifetime of a patient in the eye is the lens. The lens grows throughout the life of the patient and when it increases in size it will block the angle. So that is why it is common in middle aged women okay and hypermetropia we know that the eyeball is small in hypermetropia. So we can understand that the angle is small as well so more predisposed to closure. And another point is emotionally unstable women it is said in some books that they are also more predisposed to angle closure glaucoma. Now, before we proceed further, let us learn something about pupillary block. What is pupillary block? We will be seeing before we understand pupillary block, we have to know that the diameter of the pupil normally is 3 to 4 millimeters in the normal condition. When it is fully dilated, it is 9 to 10 millimeters however in mid dilated condition it is about 6 to 8 millimeters. So the normal pupil size is 3 to 4 millimeters fully dilated is 9 to 10 and mid dilated is when the pupil diameter is 6 to 8 millimeters. Now let us see the physiology of pupillary block and how it causes a rise in the intraocular pressure. Now what happens the main thing is that the pupil is dilated in this condition. When is the pupil dilated? We all know that the pupil dilates when there is a reduction in the brightness of light. So, now there is a tense person sitting in the dark that is an anxious person or as we have discussed an emotionally unstable person let us uh, assume. And when he is sitting, when she is sitting in the dark, the pupil is mid dilated. So, there is an increase in the physiological pupil block. So, let us imagine to understand this clearly, this is a piece of cloth and two people are holding it tightly from either side. So, you can know that when it is held tight, it is very taut. But when they let it loose, it becomes like this, it becomes flaccid, right? So, the same thing you can apply over here is that when the pupil is constricted, it is like this. It is taut and very tight and extended. But when it is dilated, it becomes flaccid like this. So, the peripheral iris is more flaccid. As you can see in this picture, when it becomes flaccid, the aqueous, it, the, this, this part falls on the lens and comes in contact with this. So, when this aqueous is secreted, it gets collected all over in the posterior chamber. 
So the intraocular pressure increases in the posterior chamber and this condition is called iris bombay when the iris moves forward because of collection of aqueous humor in the posterior chamber. So there is uh, let's just revise there is a position of iris to the lens preventing the aqueous from flowing from posterior to the anterior chamber causing iris bombay. Now this iris goes and blocks the angle. So the pressure in the posterior chamber rises resulting in anterior bowing of the peripheral iris causing an obstruction of our trabecular meshwork that is here. It is obstructed by the anteriorly bowed iris. Hello everyone. This is Dr. Sai Suguna, your mentor for ophthalmology at MediCoab. Now, thanks for watching the video. Now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app. The trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below.